So Spider-Man 2 was revealed at the State of Play yesterday. Well, it wasn't revealed, but it was expanded upon at the State of Play yesterday. And it makes me really happy. When I, uh, when I first saw it, of course, I was taken in by the visuals and the new gameplay options and everything. But then the IGN interview came out after um, talking to some of the developers on the game. And I think that's what prompted this video for me. Because what I realize now is that Spider-Man 2 fulfills on pretty much all of the key metrics that I wanted from the PS5 that were promised from Sony. Um, and so I want to talk about it. So let's take a quick look at this article. Let's just... Um, Let's have a quick browse of it. We're only going to look at a few parts. So over here, here's the IGN article. You can find it, you know, on your own if you want to. But over here, the very first thing I think kind of like the headline is the fact that every single mode in Spider-Man 2 will have ray tracing enabled just by default. Um, this is exciting. This is exciting because ray tracing was sort of like the buzzword that was being thrown this generation. And so far, it has always meant some kind of a compromise. So it's been there before. And first of all, I don't think that ray tracing is the be end and sorry, the be all and end all um, of everything. I don't think that I'm going to penalize the game for not using ray tracing in the future. I just think that it's one of the lighting techniques that people have. And it has certain inherent advantages. But like we've said before, um, and like we've seen before, it has inherent compromises as well. So now though we are presented with this game where we have fidelity mode in previous games which had a full 4k ray trace reflections and then we had the performance mode which turned off the ray tracing and rendered at a lower resolution and then we were able to add i think around launch if not just after the performance ray tracing mode as we called it which was trying to be the best of both and for this game we are really able to deliver that as a baseline performance mode there's no mode of this game that has a ray tracing turned off. No need for it. We've really figured out how to deliver what we feel like is the right Spider-Man visuals. And we want to make sure every, play every player is seeing that. So that, that was from <laughs> MF, who I'm sure his name is up there. Um, uh, let's see what's his name what's his name what's his name mike fitzgerald okay so he's the what he's a director of core technology so fantastic fantastic quote from him there i think that's so exciting um i do wonder if later down the line they're going to add a 120 hertz mode with ray tracing turned off um that would be also like a fun little thing to experience but even as it is 60 frames per second ray tracing enabled um Wow, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. That is a core promise that was made and kind of like an aspect that I think that other console manufacturers leaned even further on than Sony did. But still, we have it delivered here as a baseline, as a standard feature. And yes, when it gets to PC, it will be even more impressive because depending on the amount of hardware that you throw at it, you may be able to do 4K, 120 Hertz, ray tracing enabled visuals with more you know crowd densities and more cars and just more things going on and even you know just more definition in the ray tracing you know once it gets on pc you'll be able to have more ray trace shadows and better reflection quality and everything because there's always going to be something that they use to kind of like make this possible on a console so pc gamers that are going to get this game um eventually sooner or later you guys are going to have like a wonderful experience and I'm so happy for you guys. But um, as a console gamer myself, I'm so happy to see all of this being fulfilled. And I, 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 I just want to take a moment to also talk about what also excited me further down. You know, there's a whole, there's a whole bunch here you can read through it. Um, but the other thing that excites me is the gameplay element, being able to switch between the two characters. We've seen this in other games before, but never as quickly. Like what they showed yesterday was so exciting because it felt so fluid and so seamless. We fade to black for just a second and then there's a short animation that plays and boom, you're right there. You know, in GTA 5, um, that took a process, especially when it came out first on the PlayStation 4, 3? GTA 5 is an old game, right? Like, was it PlayStation 3? Um, I don't even know. <laughs> but on the PlayStation 4, at least, it took a moment. Um, on the PlayStation 5, it, it took far less of a moment, but it still required, you know, like the whole zoom out, zooming, come, come. 
and over here no it's it's just it feels seamless you know it feels like something that you want to do more often because you don't have to sit there and wait and i just think that is so exciting and so what do they credit here you know they create the credit sorry um on the tech side they say um and i think that the greatest thing for us on the tech side uh, with the PS5 was the SSD and the pipeline that's in there with all the hardware decoding and all that kind of stuff and so for the ability and so the ability for us to be able to just bring in massive amounts of data so quickly means that even though you can go much faster in this game than you could in the previous one the PS5 can keep up no sweat with just all of that data and allowing us to have all of that there so Again, fulfilling on the SSD promise. Because if you remember the you know Road to PS5 talk by Mark Cerny, it wasn't just about getting rid of loading screens and super fast loading times. It was that you were able to, you were going to be able to actually travel faster in the game. You know, like you can stream in the data, which was always the thing that limited how quickly your car can drive, for example. And so now they have said at some point earlier in this article, they have said that you travel about three times faster um than you do in the previous game and for me that sense of speed was sorely needed because when you play the ps4 version swinging web swinging is great everything about this is great except for the top speed you feel like there is this arbitrary limitation on how fast you're going and i think that three times faster is wonderful would i have loved to see 10 times faster what they would be even, like maybe that's playstation 6 territory but still like that will finally immerse you more into this fantasy of being like this really cool web swinger where you're just like flying you know literally flying through the city so i want it to be so fast that it's almost challenging to control how fast you're going you know so maybe maybe it's actually a good thing we stop at three times but the problem if it fulfills on this promise so i keep saying that this game fulfills on the promises right so let's take a look at some of those promises that they made and so here were the five key things that the playstation 5 was supposed to deliver to you now the last one over here um kind of doesn't count for you guys that only have the digital version because you don't care about you know ultra hd blu-ray so on, let's only look at the first four uh 3d audio as a person that has experienced 3d audio as a person that is like really into sound and like home cinema and home theater it delivers this with a plum. There are times when my 3D audio setup with the PS5 rivals my experience with the home theater 5.1 surround sound that I have. And the fact that this is just available to you, just put on a pair of headphones or you even use your TV speakers or a sound bar. Um, and now they have implemented Dolby Atmos support so that you know that if you have gone through the effort of either purchasing a Dolby Atmos capable soundbar or you've gone to a full-blown home theater, the synergy between these three technologies will be even closer than they were before. And that is like, that's so wonderful. That's available to you. You don't have to pay an extra fee for it. You can just plug in a pair of headphones, any headphones, and you will get a great virtual approximation and it's right there built in. Cannot tell you how happy I am about that. Um, it also means that when you're playing away from home, your sound quality isn't tremendously degraded. If you go, you know, from a person that has surround sound set up to, okay, now I need to go over to this other place, but I have headphones of good quality and I can have the 3D, op uh, 3D audio option on, that gives you like, honestly, 75 to 85% of the experience for literally no money all built into the console i am so excited about it i think 3d audio for me is one of my favorite features of the playstation 5. um haptics and adaptive triggers i love these things i really really do some people are kind of like a miss on it some people like it in one in certain games some people don't like it in others that's perfectly fine i think out of all of the options this one is like the most optional to you this is the most subjective depending on the player but this game does deliver on it and there are mini games that are sort of built around this feature i love it in returnal um the most out of all games um i love it in horizon forbidden west and ghost of tsushima i did love it in death strandings director scott and i think i'm gonna love it in this game and there's just such a nice tactile feel that it brings. It's not even something that necessarily elevates your experience. It's just something that kind of like 
just adds that little bit of deeper immersion where you feel like the controller is responding to the gameplay and therefore getting you more invested in what it is that you're doing. It's probably like the closest um, immersion enhancer that you have before you, you head into the VR world, you know, so I really, really like the haptics. Then you have here the ultra high speed SSD and this is one thing where people have tried to make it contentious like somehow they had said that oh it was so special that it could never be outdone no they never said that they just say that this is really powerful and a lot of people look at the raw specs of the ssd and then they're like okay there are now ssds available that will outmatch the playstation 5 ssd well of course they are but the thing is when they were talking about the ultra high speed ssd they were talking about their whole kind of like platform layer around that ssd because as they said you know if you just have a fast ssd but all of the other hardware decoders and all of the other technical jargon things that go into making that speed achievable are not in place then you're only going to see a marginal improvement on what you can actually do and what the player actually receives at the end of the day so yes on pc you can go out and you can you know purchase a faster ssd but you're not going to get the same speed as this PS5 because the Windows environment doesn't necessarily have all of those things kind of streamlined the way the PlayStation 5 does. So again, it delivers on this and we've seen this in the drastic or uh, almost elimination of loading screens on many PlayStation 5 titles, not just from first party, but from third party as well. But when you look at games like Horizon Forbidden West and how quick the fast traveling or how quick loading in is, or when you look at games like Return or when you look at games like Spider-Man Miles Morales, when you look at games like Forspoken and just how seamlessly you can get into the game, get into the world and be playing. That is something that you only miss when you go back a step to the PlayStation 4. Like you don't realize how much that seamlessness adds to your experience until you're hit with a loading screen, until a having to die and reload the checkpoint takes like 37 seconds until you realize wow this is like really getting my way my muscle memory that i'm trying to develop it is so much easier to retry an experience to push for no i'm going to stay on this difficulty i'm going to learn the patterns of this boss when literally three seconds back later you're back into the fight when it takes 90 seconds for you to get back into it like you lose some of that muscle memory you're trying to build and as a gamer it is a lesser experience and then finally hardware based ray tracing and i would say that up to this point this has been the most hit and miss one because like i said it has always meant a compromise like yes you can have ray tracing in hogwarts legacy for example but now you're limited to 30 frames per second and 30 frames per second it feels heavy and sluggish and almost nauseating now and i'm sorry i know that we spent generations playing games at 30 frames per second and i do not even necessarily want to fight a person on 30 frames but once you're used to higher even 40 40 is a tremendous difference from 30 like it is a huge colossal jump in your actual lived experience as a gamer so i think that 40 frames per second whenever possible when if you're playing on a 120 hertz screen and blah 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 the point is if you've invested in, in your gaming experience having 40 frames as the minimum is fantastic so traditionally though we've not been able to hit you know anything higher than 30 with ray tracing enabled you know except for some again insomnia titles but now finally that restriction is taken away like i said I do not expect necessarily the next Guerrilla game to be using ray tracing in every single mode. I do not expect the next Santa Monica, Santa Monica, Santa Monica, my God. I do not expect the next Santa Monica game to necessarily be using ray tracing, nor the next Naughty Dog game to necessarily be using ray tracing. But it is exciting that we have at least one example, one AAA big budget, high blockbuster example where it's like ray tracing is the default that is so exciting to me and then finally the ultra hd blu-ray as a person that actually uses 4k blu-ray i can tell you this is a great 4k blu-ray player um just for like movie watching and it's so good that it eliminates your need to go and buy a separate h 4k 
Blu-ray player in case you want to use it for movies. The PS5 can handle that task and it can handle it with a plum. Tests have been done on it, it is close to the best. For you to outdo what the 4K Blu-ray player in the PS5 can do, you will have to spend almost as much if not more than the PlayStation 5 in its entirety. So it is a truly wonderful thing. So here were the promises and Spider-Man 2 fulfills on all of them. And I'm so excited to finally be getting to the stage in the life cycle where hopefully from now on, we are going to make and see, so we're going to see more and more games hit every single one of these marks. Um, and then the last thing that I want to say before I let you guys go um, is this is why we have first party studios. This is why we have platform exclusives. This is why we have console exclusives, because this is what we want um we want these games to do we want these games to fulfill on every single key promise that was made by the manufacturer spider-man 3 hits every single one of these things personally for you you might be like i don't care about haptics or adaptive triggers or you may not see the point or hear the difference in 3d audio or maybe you're not even that impressed by the ultra high speed ssd but objectively speaking it fulfills on these promises and for 90 plus percent of the players they are going to agree that it is a great example of every single one of these things being put into play and that's just exciting so before i let you go that's what i wanted to say this is why we have exclusives and i do not mind these games going to pc later and to then be optimized even more because guess what if you're a pc gamer and you put you know the money into your pc rig you got the 80 90 series card or equivalent on the amd side and you've got that 12 core processor with multi-threading and you've got that 500 dollar motherboard and you know you've really invested yourself into everything that the pc has to do this is one of the games that you should get on pc to be able to honor you know the the sacrifices you know that you made in terms of money the time that you invested in terms of research and thinking about it the synergy that you've built in your computer you know like yeah you should absolutely get this game but for those of us that bought the console now it's like it's on sony to deliver these experiences that are going to fulfill on those promises and i know one thing that is missing there is 8k right it has 8k on the box but notice that 8k was never one of the key promises i think that 8k was one of those like tertiary promises you know it's like it's it's, it's below somewhere there it's like yes it's eventually i do want sony to actually create an 8k something like make it like you did put it on the box so what is it that justifies it but for me it is of very little import compared to these five key things um so here you are these are the five things spider-man 2 fulfills on all of them i'm super excited for this game um because finally finally ray tracing finally this thing it's like all of these things are finally all held up without a single bit of compromise it's fantastic all right guys that's all for me thank you for having a conversation with me I look forward to seeing you on the next video should you choose to come back again. Otherwise, hey, have a good one. Enjoy gaming.